The Team Never Quit podcast is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Navy Federal Credit Union has great rates on auto loans. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. Gotcha, man. What's going, guys? Hi. <laughs> What's happening, brother? Good, good. Thanks for joining us. No, thank you guys for having me, honestly, truly. Yeah, absolutely, man. You got a pretty pretty crazy story you got. It's a, <laughs> it's a tough journey, uh, but I, th- I think it was one worth sticking it out for sure, um, you know, through the ups and downs. Yeah, cool, man. Man, every ride anybody likes to go on has those. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> It was, it was tough. I can't, I'm not going to lie. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Well, well, bro, I got to follow. You wouldn't be here if that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> you got to earn your right in here. Yeah. That's how exactly. it works. Exactly. Okay, exactly. just to make sure. That, that's kind of what we get into here, man. This, well, I actually congratulate you on that. Like, no, well well done. I mean, because first of all, you don't get battle weakened. You get battle hardened. And it, at, there is that point when you come out of that, you can go one or two directions. You, you go, you, it can encapsulate you, it can crush you, or you can push it out. And then you become a light for, some, for other people because everyone's going to have to go through something. So when you're, when you're sitting there, and I think that point's different for everybody, but if, if you kind of bring that out in the open, it, it helps them out. Like, yeah, there'll be a point. All you do is say, you know what, man, it was awesome. It kicked my ass. I'm real upfront about that in my journey. It's like, yo, bro, just beat me to death, man. Yeah. That was awesome. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> let's do it again. <laughs> I bet. Well, it, it, that, yeah, right. So life kind of, the, there's those of us down here who go through that suffering that long, long time. You know, we just kind of, it's our thing. Because what happens is it starts to open up doors for you. If you know that's your life, one, you're cognizant on almost everything around you. Yeah. If you know that that's your path. Mm-hmm. So there's a sense of enlightenment in that. Because yeah. we see things differently now. Com- completely. A hundred percent. Okay. Just long. Okay. All right. Now that you know that. Okay. Yeah. Now that that's online, what it's, it's almost like a slow puzzle. Once you yeah. see that, you start putting it back together. You're like, all right, all right. But the only way to get to that side was to get smashed through. A hundred percent. It was, it's ridiculous, but I, even through, regardless, through all the surgeries, everything, like I was broken, you know, mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, every way. Um, at the end of the day, I really feel unbreakable now, you know, obviously not physically because I <laughs> shit, I can get broken, you know, again, you know, but it's it's like the the aspect of the, like, the little things don't affect me as they used to, well, uh, you know, but you also story. appreciate the little things a lot more. Oh, you know, man, I heard it said one time is like when you get busted like that and your frame doesn't go all the way down, it brings your spirit out. So you actually it's a, you almost get to live a different side here. It gives mm-hmm. you a sight that you normally no one else has until you get whipped like that. It's a it's yeah. more of a, a good feeling than a bad. I saw, it says weird when we say it like that. Yeah. I'm like, man, you can't believe what did what it did to me though. Like what it, I got what I could see in my and how I how I look at things now when you had to go through it on this side. Because I think we're designed to, you know, to take pain and be mean, something, you know, because it kind of comes easy. Yeah. So you bring the 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 the, the the shell gets rattled around a little bit. <laughs> Shakes yeah, up loose. And that's, and that's what I say, like, in my book, you know, like, uh, my mentality didn't change, but my perspective did, you know? Like, yeah. My perspective on life and everything, it's just, like, completely just changed, you know? And not because I wanted it to. It's just, like, I had to do it in order to survive, you know, in order to get through all this. Yeah. Well, we want to hear your story. So let's, let's put a pause on that for a second. And um, how do you say your last name? My last name, you say Perez. Okay, yeah, because Perez. my cousin yeah, we got y'all in the family. married <laughs> a Perez. And really? yes. And they I say always, it like that. I always say Perez. Pisses them off. Pisses her off, dude, when she says it, it like that. It doesn't piss her husband off, who he's the, the Perez. He says Perez. And mm-hmm. my, my cousin that married him, she says, no, it's Perez. And she tells everyone <laughs> she's so defensive of it. And it's so funny because so every time I meet somebody with that last name, I always say, how do you say your last name? Yeah. No, and it's, it's been because um, my whole name is Cesar Antonio Perez Mancia. So it's a mouthful. Right. Yeah. But like I, I came to U.S. when I was three. So I've gone by Cesar Perez all my life. Yeah. And it's, 
So now I just, whenever I meet somebody, I just tell them, oh, it's Cesar Perez. Perez, <laughs> yeah. So that's what um, my cousin's husband, he, he always says, yeah, it's George Perez, but we call him Jorge Perez. <laughs> that's yeah, funny. yeah, bro. I mean, you got hooked up with the great handle because you can deliver it like with the James Bond kind of smooth with the last yeah, yeah. name first and, then, and go in. And then the first name Caesar. We were out to do a Titus the other yeah. that dinner the other day. I was like, man, where are all these guys coming from? Yeah, right. yeah. Well, it's a great name. My cousin uh, and her husband, he's like the greatest guy that's married into our family. We just love him to death. So. I'm not going to say him. that he's a great guy on the air because yes, he, he is, is. <laughs> but I, I, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going exactly. to let, let him so know that, that he's a great guy. He is a great we, guy. I'm not, I'm not going to tell him to his face. We love him. <laughs> yeah. I would right. never say it to his face. Yeah. <laughs> great dude. Sorry. So, well, Caesar, man, we're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to start by just doing a quick introduction. Pretty easy format. We do it just like this. We're all hanging out together, just chatting. Uh, we usually kick things off with a bit of an icebreaker and then we'll kind of just jump right into your story. And then towards the end, we'll give you an opportunity to plug and promote kind of whatever you guys, you know, have coming up. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, sounds great. All right. I'm going to do your, I'm going to do my best to say your last name right when I do your introduction here. All right. Pettis. <laughs> we just had a whole segment over there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. So we, we just did this. Okay. All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Team Never Quit podcast. Hey, guys, if you haven't already, follow us on YouTube. We are so close to hitting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. That would mean the world to us if you could do that. If you haven't already, you can follow us on social media, team underscore never quit, and uh, pretty much every other platform we're out there as well. I think we're even kind of dabbling in TikTok. You know, <laughs> slow to go, but, you know, I think we're, I think we'll get there. We've got some ideas, big, big hey, ideas. Are you on TikTok? <laughs> He's got a video out there. Do I? Yeah, you've got a video. <laughs> do I? Is there, do I? Yeah. I've never been on there. It's that video with you and Caleb. And look, it took me a long time to <laughs> yeah, get off the yeah. side of the pool, right? I kind of eased myself into things. You know, I'll let all y'all, the rest of y'all run in there and see what happens. Right? Our kids would love to be the TikTok producer. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, I, I've been around a little while, so I kind of stroll in. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> see what okay. works. What does. So what's our Patreon question? Patreon question is, what is one thing that instantly makes your day better? God, right, well, when I see my wife. Oh. Aw, you're so Brownie points. Hey, hey, brownie points. On. You got them, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. That's good. I had no idea that question was coming, by the way. That's right. Me and him did not practice this before At we all, got right? here. That's right. Okay. Just check. Got his back. Thank you. Um, I need two witnesses on that, actually. <laughs> yeah. No. I second. Oh, I second. Two, third. Second. Yeah, right there. Good. Okay, great. Great, great, great. <laughs> How about you, Caesar? For me, it's got to be my family. 100%. I, I just I couldn't live without them. And every time I see them, they just. It brightens my day. Okay, I feel like you outdid me there because you brought everyone into the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what I mean? That's a great job, by the way. I, I, yeah, you know, that was. Like that, yeah, no, you did. <laughs> totally shined, by the way. Yeah. Totally shined in that moment. Yeah. yeah. Same. I mean, my family is everything to me. My husband and my kids. Um, even my Sweet, she outdid me, too. Did you hear that? <laughs> and kids. Get the kids. So you let the kids out. Yeah. That's a roll. Y'all are so nice and sweet. Like, I'm thinking about, like, free snacks, free candy. An Amazon package. Of course you are. Those Andrew. are the things that brighten my day. Okay. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Yeah. When I get some really cool gear in in the mail and like I got a package with my name on it because I don't get mail often, that brightens my day. Is it more oh, like yeah. a pleasure than a brighten? Maybe. Maybe so. I don't know. For you know sure, what I mean? Because that yeah. it goes away, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's quick. Well, then that's a pleasure. Okay. Well, then so I've got nothing bright your day means once you wake up and it's there. Should I be sweet? Should I be real sweet? It, when I Kara. see Kara, she yeah. brightens my day. day. I'm trying All to right. teach you something here, son. Pay right. attention, man. All right. It's on, it's on Patreon. God. Oh, my It's gosh. on tape. I'm trying to help you. I've been trying, trying to coach him for, I don't know. I've had this kid. Ten ever. years. <laughs> been longer than that. He's been in the family since the beginning. Oh, my gosh. That's great. Uh, well, that is a great Patreon question. Hey, if you guys didn't know, you can go to patreon.com slash team never quit. That's where you can join us. You can ask your questions. You can hang out. You can get some bonus content, exclusive swag, all the fun stuff. But what you're here for is another incredible episode. And we've got one in store for you guys. Cesar Perez was an up and coming Hollywood actor. He starred opposite Daniel Radcliffe. Yes, Harry Potter and was experiencing exponential rise until a drunk driver hit him head on and shattered his dreams. Through relentless support from his family and sheer determination, Caesar spends every day of, of his second chance at life striving to be the best possible version of himself. Welcome to the show, man. Ah, appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me on board. <laughs> man, you bet. You bet. Like I said, I got a file on you and everything, so it's, uh, it's all official. But uh, thank you again for being on here. Yeah, yeah. 
So let's back it up. I mean, that's in a, early in life. You were successful. Back it up even further. That how, where do you come from? Let me yeah. just start with that. We like to get like a whole I, yeah, picture. I did that whole of picture everybody. of all this, just just so everyone kind of get an understanding. And I need it yeah. from you. So I need to know where you're from, and how and kind of how you grew up. Yeah, we'll get to the nitty gear, the nitty gritty. Um, <laughs> I was born in Santana, El Salvador, um, in 1993, and I. I I think I was only there for three years, so I don't remember much, um, but we came to the U.S. in 1996. Um, I think in El Salvador, we were just finishing up uh, a gruesome civil war. So my parents, yeah. you know, they wanted a better life for us. And there wasn't really an uh, environment to grow that back home. So we came to the U.S. and this country adopted us. And my mom always focused on making sure we were outstanding citizens in order to earn our rights to live here. And that's basically what we did all our lives. And because she always wanted to further her education back home, she made sure she put us in all the classes and we got all good grades and we were doing extracurricular activities. So um, they harp on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think she, we should uh, stress that. And I've never, I, I haven't seen otherwise, and I very rarely hear otherwise the fact that that's not the case. Yeah, Especially no. with the kids. They're like, and I mean, so much so they're like, you get your ass in there and you better learn to be thankful because we're, I get that. For I, immigrant families. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, especially because she wanted to further her education back home, but she never got the chance. So she made sure we got like our hands on everything. So when we went out, like, for example, when I was in high school, I wanted to get, you know, into Spanish class because it would be a, an easy A, you know, I didn't want to. <laughs> It's not really fair that y'all get to do that, by the way. I just, yeah. I, I feel like all That's, the Spanish that we had to go through in high school was, you know, I didn't learn anything. Yeah, I'm going to ask you that right school. now. Did you learn anything in there? No, because she didn't let me take it. Oh, I had shit. to learn oh, French. Never mind. So <laughs> you had to learn French. Oh, I had to learn French. And um, <laughs> French. so now I, I'm trilingual, which is beautiful, you know, because she made me learn French. She put us in ASL classes, which is American Sign Language. I was, I was learning trumpet, bass, guitar lessons. And it wasn't just me. It was my sisters learning piano, cello, violin, viola. And then we would go to art lessons and then French lessons. And then I would go to soccer. Um, so I, I'm, it was like another school day after she picked us up from school, um, which at the time was rough. It was hard, but uh, that was literally what she wanted. And it's made us better for it. Like, it opened so many opportunities. All right. I'm, I asked awesome. that too, because I'm raising kids. <laughs> so and every time I hear from some kids are like, hey, man, my mom pushed me. My dad pushed me. They were all over me. Maybe do this and that and the other. They always say, I'm thankful for it. Yeah. I never hear the other, the other side of that. Right? There's no, oh, my parents, they didn't make me do anything. I'm so glad. I, I never hear that. So, like, I wish they would have made me do something. You feel yeah. the same way? No, I, I, I mean, yeah, like, I, I, I'm thankful for everything yeah. she made us do. Right, yeah. And taking us, you know, down that path. Even though at the time, to be honest, like, I, I want to just hang out with my friends. I want I wanted to just go a party or whatever, but she always picked us up and it was heading to bass lessons, classical uh, guitar lessons. It was, and at the end of the day, you know, like I, I don't know where I'd be if she hadn't been like that with us, you know? So I'm grateful. I think Are your siblings the, like that too? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. In fact, my sister, she just had her, her baby three years ago. Um, and she is already starting him in music lessons, oh. teaching him violin and stuff, because she realized the effect they had on us and realized how my parents uh, raised us. And she kind of wants that for her son. So it's kind of like now my parents had the blueprint and now she's trying to follow That's it. That's awesome. You know? I love that. Well, they, they leave out the part where it's like, hey, we want you to play these sports when you're young, because when you get old, you won't be able to run and do it. <laughs> like, you're going to be busted up. <laughs> hardly get up out the bed. You know, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, it's like, yeah, you won't be at a professional because there's only a, there's, those guys are spe girls are special, yeah. right? So we get to have yeah. fun playing sports while you play when you're young, because when you get old, you'll it have hurts. plenty of time to hang out with your friends. <laughs> you will have plenty of time. That's that's true. That's true. You know what I mean? They don't ever yeah. say that, though. And if, if you're logical, if they, I, I feel like back when I was a young kid, if my dad would throw some logic on me like that, I'd say, hey, look, I'm just trying to hook you up. You know, get this done when you're a kid, because when you get older, you won't want to do it. Well, and learning yeah. anything, like learning a different language when you're older is almost impossible because your brain is so, you know, set in its ways. Like, for me, it is so hard to even learn Spanish and everyone around me speaks Spanish and I want to learn. I know all the words. I just can't I, I, yeah. put it in a sentence. Sure.
All right, guys, let's take a second to thank our sponsors over at Mad Rabbit. Most of you guys probably don't know this about me because obviously you can't see me and I don't post a lot of pictures or videos online. And so one thing people don't know is that I actually have a lot of tattoos. Actually, all of us at TNQ pretty much have a tattoo. Marcus obviously is covered in tattoos. Morgan is covered in tattoos. Surprisingly, I'm also covered in tattoos. John, our video guy, tattoos. All of us, tattoos. Now, one thing about tattoos that is pretty frustrating is that I don't always take the time and attention to remember to go back and get these tattoos touched up, which you're supposed to do to keep your tattoos looking fresh. I've got some tattoos here that are looking pretty, pretty faded. And that is something that I do not have to worry about anymore because the guys over at Mad Rabbit have sent us some killer products that are designed specifically to help you revitalize your tattoo, preserve your tattoos, heal new tattoos. It is seriously one of the best products I've ever tried. I was actually just talking to Morgan the other day about it and I had asked him if he had received his in the mail yet and he said he did. He said the exact same thing I did, which was he was pretty impressed by just how much more vivid our old tattoos looked by putting on their product. And you might not realize this, but 30% of Americans have tattoos. I'd imagine that a good portion of our listeners out there probably at least have one tattoo. If you are one of those people, you guys need to check out Mad Rabbit. They are committed to reinventing tattoo aftercare. They were actually founded by a couple of friends with a passion for ink. Mad Rabbit creates simple, effective, and natural products that help improve the healing process and preserve your tattoos and it's all delivered straight to your door. Their hero product is their tattoo bomb. That is what revitalizes, it replenishes, and it proactively preserves those tattoos. It's effective on both new and old tattoos and all skin types. So for me, obviously I got a lot of very old tattoos. I probably haven't gotten a new tattoo in, I don't know, eight, nine years. It is, I'm way long overdue. If you know, if you got a good tattoo artist, give me some recommendations. I'm looking for a new sleeve, all right? You guys have got to say just how incredible this product is. When they say that they use natural ingredients, they mean it. Their balm has only eight ingredients. Shea butter, cocoa butter, beeswax, calendula, which is a flower, sweet almond, lavender, frankincense, and cucumber. That is it. Forget the days of ingredients you can't pronounce. With Mad Rabbit, you know what you're putting on your body. Truly all natural. Plus, they've got all the products you need for your tattoo. So whether it's a tattoo sunscreen to a soothing gel, much more, they have got the products for your tattoos. If you guys have some old tattoos that need a little, little love, I would definitely suggest this. Or if you've got a brand new tattoo or maybe you're thinking about getting one, this is the product you should be using. So when you think Tattoo Care, think Mad Rabbit. They have preserved over 1.5 million tattoos. And right now they've got an exclusive offer just for the Team Never Quit listeners. If you go to madrabbit.com slash TNQ, use our promo code TNQ, you'll receive 25% off. That is 25% off when you head to madrabbit.com slash TNQ. Use our promo code TNQ, guys. One more time, madrabbit.com slash TNQ. Use our promo code TNQ and get 25% off and make sure your tattoos look as good as they've ever looked. The biggest scam is having Spanish class in school. Yeah, I have never run across one one person who's like, I learned everything. No, no, no. I took Spanish. You need to send them year. out in town to work with yeah. Spanish. What were you? That's all you do is hear it. And I made A's in all my Spanish classes because it was really just vocab words. Yeah, vocab. I know all the vocab words, but I don't know how to put it in a sentence. So, so like a conjugating it. Yeah, right. Like, like hit me with the vocabulary letters. You know, don't don't, don't yeah. come at me with them. So our kids are fluent in Spanish. Ooh, I and, made sure of that. Yeah, I made sure of that. And yeah. like, they have to translate for me. Yeah, it's hilarious. So it's my kid got so blonde funny. hair and blue eyes. Looks like a white kid. <laughs> <laughs> but that sucker knows his business and he can speak it. And he's got a little. Uh, he's got an accent. Like a, a Mexican. Yeah, his first, from his first, his yeah. first, his native tongue is Spanish. That's what we made <laughs> happen. Our nanny would speak. It's Spanish. hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I'm training him to be a James Bond ninja. Jason, I mean, he's gonna be a badass. It's so funny because he will <laughs> translate for us. He said he translated right. for somebody at the camp. You too. can ask him to do it. He'll be like, "Oh, I don't know it." Yeah. And they know sign language, a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, wow. but I just dump as much of that stuff young, in him as I can. can. Yeah, you fix it up quick, man. You can man. soak up all the different yeah. languages and for sure. Everything. I took yeah. another cool thing. The other day, the wife and I were out with a buddy of ours named JT, a military dude, kind of rough and tumble looking, you know, owns a everything other than you would think of someone who would play the piano, right? And we're wow. sitting, and we walk in here, man, he freaking sits down and starts jamming on that piano. And that was one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time, when, when someone does that. He's amazing on the piano. Yeah, when you, got a, when you got somebody who can just sit down and start ripping something down. Like brings tears yeah. to your eyes. Wow. 
I mean, of, yeah. I thought that was one of the coolest things. I think things. I can say who it is. It's JT, did, JT. from Black Rifle yeah. Coffee. Yeah, he's he is <laughs> That's awesome. an yeah. amazing like what? pianist. I mean, he's yeah. so talented in so many ways. But anyway, getting off track. Okay, so your <laughs> mom was awesome. And she yeah. pushed you really, really hard. And yeah. did she get you into acting classes or where'd you go from there? No, she didn't. Uh, and honestly, because she, uh, she did, we came to the U.S. when we were very young, me and my sisters. So I'm the baby of the family, but they were still like, what, six, seven? Um, Wait, uh, how so many? Out of three. So okay. I have two older sisters and then I'm the last one in the family. Right. I'm the only boy. And then um, she, they never learned they never practiced their English because they were like, you're going to learn Spanish and make sure, you know, we speak nothing but Spanish at home. So again, that kind of didn't allow them to perfect their English. So they still have a slight accent. It's gotten a lot better, but um, I guess it, it was just like their sacrifice to make sure we were bilingual and make sure we didn't lose like where we were from. But no, she didn't get me into acting classes. Um, I was doing music for a theater, for plays and everything. But I've always been passionate about storytelling, you know, from conception all the way to production and post-production like uh, and marketing side of things like there's always a message to get across like a story I want to convey and bring to life so I was I was like that's where I want to major in so I majored in multimedia and design I went to Georgia Southern on the full paid tuition for my academics and nice. uh, from there on I was just sending my resume into like new productions that were coming into the east coast like because Savannah was booming in uh in Atlanta for the film industry and I signed up and they got me to be a senior designer for a few feature films. And then ironically, uh, for Beast of Wait, wait, oh, 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 you skipped over a bunch of stuff. <laughs> it's like, wait a second, oh, wait a second, back to something, man. So like in high school, were you a drama geek? Because I was. I I'm not talking about on the stage. I'm talking about like I had to work in the back with the lights and set and then like that, right? Because there's so much that goes into that, that, that world. Just to so produce something much. to entertain people, to entertain humans. You know how hard that is? Keep yeah, attention. it's ridiculous. But no, I wasn't on stage or doing the back production side of things, like stage lights or anything. I was in the pit with like the musicians. Right. So you know, if there were performances, I'd be playing the music. So I'd be part of the performance and the play, but I'd be in the pit. I wouldn't be on stage or anything. So when you decide to go to Hollywood, how, how do you get, they say your big break, right? Do you remember what mm -hmm. that was? Uh, yeah, so I stayed in touch with one of the casting directors, uh, Chad, and we were working on a film together. Uh, it was called Beast of Burden, but I was doing the design production side of things because I had sent my resume in and uh, one of the set designers got in touch with me. She's like, we'd like to work with you. And so one night I was making uh, a fake passport for Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, good for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, Wait a second, are they good? How much you charge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're bombs. So I was like, wow. I could have lived a different life. Right? <laughs> We're but, glad that you're on the path that you're yeah. on. Hey, <laughs> man, it's, I, look, what I did for a living, too, it's always like everybody's good at something. Yeah, exactly. Whether you ex exploit, whether go good or bad on us, that's We're that's a thing. Yeah, yeah, chose the good yeah, side. Chose yeah. Good side. Yeah. That's a thing. You can choose one. They asked me to do like different license plates, also, you know, and a bunch of like product set design. So uh, they offered uh, the casting director was like, "Hey, they're casting for this role." You know, he was always promoting local artists, and I was he, was, he asked me if he wanted if I wanted to audition, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, hell yeah, let's let's do it." And I honestly wasn't expecting much, but again, the fact of the production side of things and also trying to bring a story to life. I, I gave it my best shot. And if not, then I was still going to be part of the production, but on the art department. And uh, he called me a week later and he's like, hey, you beat everybody out of L.A. that auditioned for this role. All right, so talk so about that. When you walk in, just, you know, you got UFC fighters that walk into the cage. You got I mean, it's the level of anxiety that goes into anything that you're trying to be really good at is equal. I feel yeah. it, it goes it, it goes with the perception of the fighter. So, I mean, when yeah, you're walking yeah. in there for your first audition, we just like, you know, I mean, what, what was it? What do you what do you even do? The good thing about this one is so most auditions are, yeah, especially before COVID, you'd have to go in and, you know, audition in front of like a couple of directors or producers uh, or casting directors. But for this one, they sent me the sides, which is like a portion of the script. And I just they, they wanted like a virtual, uh, you know, a videotaped audition. And then they brought me in. Um, so it was honestly just me. I just had to record it, 
kind of like slate my name, slate, slate my height, where I would live and just do the performance, but without anybody, you know, like I was acting yeah. like I was talking to Daniel Radcliffe, you know, so it was just like that performance, but I had to do it by myself. And uh, yeah, that's how I got that one. <laughs> that's awesome. So I, in the business, it works. Just one leads to the other. It's like a growth thing, right? Prove yourself. There's no small parts, just small actors. I've always heard that. that that's kind of the case, yeah. right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and it, it all leads on from there on. It's like, you know, you, you build a network and then people start knowing you. People start recognizing you. And it's the same thing with, like, the set design, you know? The, the good work I did as a designer for that film led on me to just finish up another uh, movie in Arkansas with John Malkovich and Martin Lawrence called Mind Cage. And that was just because they loved the work I did, you know? So it was, it's just word of mouth from then on. Oh, it's its own world. Yeah. yeah. There's a reason why we call them the stars up there. And it's the city <laughs> yeah. of angels. I mean, it is its yeah. own world. That was some of the best times of my life when I was up there, getting to work mm -hmm. with and do all that. Yeah. And when you're talking about, I didn't know any of this. Hollywood doesn't let you know all this. I mean, like, yeah. if you're not in there, you can't appreciate that the, the world that goes on behind the people on the screen, like from sound production, electrical, engineering, people yeah. who move the equipment. I mean, it's its own living thing. And to watch snack that. carts. Yeah, just a snack cart. Yeah. They're snack carts. From ca catering <laughs> to, to uh, costume design. I had a blast with every. I got to hang out with all of them. I mean, I made oh. a point to go around just to figure out, like, man, what's your freaking world like? It's like this. <laughs> and uh, crafty comes. Man, bro, I'll tell you what. That's why it's so tough up there. I mean, it, yeah. it, it, and you do have to, whether you know this or not, very rarely do you get like somebody who rolls in, like a Josh Hartnett. I, yeah. I specifically remember him kind of hearing about him just rolling in and being like, good. <laughs> like, you get the first part and then it just kind of takes off. Normally, you yeah. got to bust your ass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you bust, and starting at a young age. I, and I, yeah. I witnessed that. I saw that. There's the first hand, but the ones that stick around and make it like Peter Berg, the guy I got a chance to, to live with. He he's been there since as a boy. A lot of them people, you know, they just grow up in the life. So I, yeah, it's, it's cool, man. Y'all keep that from everybody. Yeah. Rightfully <laughs> so, but it, it, it was cool. Yeah, no, the life is different for sure. <laughs> so one, one part leads to the other. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, how do you know what to pick? Do you pick with because projects. like when what projects to pick? How do you how do you follow that? Do you go with, with I what think they pick you? Yeah. Well, first, I mean, at first, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at first, but then afterwards when you get yeah. you know, well, you, I mean, at first, especially like when you're trying to make it, like when you're just like for me, you know, when I first got my first role, my first break or whatever, it's like whatever your agent sends you, you know, whatever opening is in that you would fit um you know maybe it's not something you yeah, that's what i'm talking about right there how do you know that like hey i don't know if i should do this because 20 years from now if i'm an a-list and this thing comes out i mean what are we talking about right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at first you gotta you gotta just go for it you know like for a couple of these uh roles like it might not be appealing to you but if, to make a name you know and yeah, to get right. more more work you gotta you gotta go for it there's there's no there's no stopping you at that point and is it as, I've always wondered, I mean, I kind of felt like this, so it's a big place, but it's a small community. Meaning if you do well and you're kind of in the, in the beginning, that a lot of people were like, how am I going to get my name out? How are people going to find out? It, it just happens, right? I mean, by word of mouth down there, people talk and they're like, hey, this, this person gets this part. And I, I've watched them, a lot of the actors say that, like, man, I was just kind of sitting around, dude. And they hollered at me and said, I did good here, which I didn't even think that I did. Yeah. So it's, it's um, like, you could start, you know, uh, as a background artist, which is what I did, you know, like to get on stage or I mean, not on stage, but in front of the screen, like kind of get an idea of what it would be. But it, it doesn't always work out that way. You know, it's not because you were an extra or you were a background artist, you're, then you're going to get your break or anything. So it's it's really it kind of depends really on where you are. Hopefully you're at the right place at the right time. Um, Do you prefer but then also it's just that was my passion, you know, just bringing the story to life. Like I would have been OK if. I was just doing the production side of things because yeah. I would be part of bringing that that message across, that story to life, which is what I was passionate about. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Do you prefer more of the set design and the 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 design, the back behind the scenes aspect to that, or actually being in front of the camera? It has its different beauty, like just being on screen, also because. I, like I see it now also from the director perspective, right? Sure, like what yeah. his imagery is, like what he wants, 
uh, this scene to look like. And also you got to repeat every scene multiple times to get different angles. So I'm like, okay, I know what he wants now. But also with regards to the design aspect, um, now I'm, I'm pretty particular about if I'm creating something that's going to be like a hero image in, in, the, in the film, I always kind of put like my little initial in the bottom. Like there was a- oh, I mean, All your artists do that. Yeah. All of y'all do yeah. that. Y'all hide that stuff yeah. in there. That's awesome. That's a little secret <laughs> y'all keep away from everybody too. It's, yeah. it's brilliant. It's brilliant, man. Some, some of y'all do real well with that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's been, it's been great. So you're kind of in this up and coming um, role, getting uh, these gigs or whatever. And then what happens next? Yeah, so I was flying high um, in at the beginning of 2018. So at the end of 2017, um, I was doing great. I was working at Cox Media Group in Atlanta, and uh, I was their uh, video producer uh, for new sports verticals. I was working with sports, um, and then I was also doing my acting on the side. And things. I had another audition for the start of 2018. I think it was for Venom, um, and then. I grabbed my, my family post and at the end of 2017 and I told them, hey, this is all we've worked, I've worked for, you know, like we're about to have a big year in 2018. I couldn't be happier being close and surrounded by the people that I love. And um, 2018 came around and in January 2000, I mean, no, January 12th, 2018, I was driving down to see my girlfriend at the time at college. And then I was gonna go to Savannah to see my family, but a drunk driver driving westbound on eastbound lanes hit me head on going over 70 and then he spun me around and a big rig going over 70 hit me head on as well and that's when my life went black and uh i don't remember anything for the next two weeks oh my gosh i can't imagine that's one of my biggest fears driving is just some rogue car wrong, on the wrong side yeah on the wrong side i we're, we live in a rural area, and so there's no median or anything. And I'm always so scared that when we turn a curvy road, that there's going to be something in our lane. It's just one of my biggest fears. No, and it, it, and it was a, a Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. So it was a long weekend. Yeah. And my mom had told me not to come down and visit her because she she's always scared about, like, uh, you know, driving on highways and everything. So she was like, there's probably bound to be drunk people on the road. But I didn't listen. I had driven down I 16 like hundreds of times. So I was like, I got this. But I didn't expect any of this to happen. Hey, let's take a second to thank our sponsors over at Liquid IV. You guys know, especially if you're in Texas like we are, the hot summer months are here and we need to be proactive about keeping our bodies fueled and hydrated. Making hydration a priority can help you feel better. It's going to make you feel healthier. Really pretty much in anything you got going on in your life. One stick of Liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. And they've got a ton, a ton of great flavors. My favorite right now, and I like all of them, my favorite right now is the Concord Grape. I can tell you that the Concord Grape flavored liquid IV is absolutely delicious. All of their flavors. They've got, you know, pina colada, tropical punch. It sounds like summer, right? I have personally been taking my liquid IV midday in the afternoon. Usually by the time I'm kind of feeling a little run down, probably should have done it a little early on. A lot of people use it after a long night out. Maybe you, maybe you kind of hit it a little too hard. It is seriously one of the best products to make sure you're staying hydrated. Actually, one of the things that I'm actually doing is dropping off a few packs with my local volunteer fire department. Those guys are busting ass. It is hot out there. I have one of my friends and employees that works for me is actually a full-time firefighter. And he has been telling me just how brutal it is out there. So Liquid IV is great for those first responders, anyone who works outdoors, really anyone who wants to make sure they're, they're staying as hydrated as much as possible. It contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C, three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks. It's made with premium ingredients. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, and non-GMO. And it is super effective because it uses that cellular transport technology, which is designed to enhance that rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients into the bloodstream. And one of the great things about this company is for every purchase, they donate a serving to someone in need. And to date, Liquid IV has donated over 24 million 
servings globally. So love supporting a company that's doing good things. I love the flavors of the product. It's incredible. I know that I'm getting hydrated, especially whenever it's giving me more hydration than just a bottle of water alone. If you guys want to check it out, you definitely should. It's Liquid IV. You can grab it bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 15% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use our code TNQ at checkout. That's 15% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using our promo code TNQ at liquidiv.com or check it out at Costco. So what it looked like when you, when you were driving down and they were coming at you, they just an opposite lane. Is that what you, was it a, you was it a two, it? two lane or four lane split or what? How'd it work? There's two lanes, the median. Right. Yeah. 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 Westbound. Um, but no, I, the car in front of me veered drastically. Oh, okay. Back. So check. You got yeah, something in front of you. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Well, that's how, you know, you weren't behind. I, I'm kind of upfront about this. That's how, you know, God steps into your life, puts you on a different path. Right. You had, I mean, you th- the way you just explained that scenario and the way that was set up, I mean, you could have done nothing. Yeah. It's long for the ride. That's how you know. Something in front of you and something coming down, a two lane split. Right? No, no, no. Right? So you, this is what makes you stronger. There's only one way to get you this way. Right? Yeah. And I, 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 after going through a lot of the stuff that I went through, I, it kind of came to me and said, hey, man, we picked that for ourselves. That's how freaking tough you are. Yeah. Like I had to go through my stuff because I picked it for myself just to test yeah. myself because you don't get battle weakened, man. You get battle hard. Exactly. And I've seen enough of the, that kind of stuff go down. When you explain it like that, oh, man, there was something in front of me. I had no feeling like, are, are you kidding me? It wasn't like you weren't paying yeah. attention. Right. It was like you yeah. were running, that, running your line. That's it. Yeah. I tried to veer right at like the last second, but it was just too, just too late. Uh, oh you know, gosh. because the car, the car in front of me almost hit them, but I, I was the one to take the full full blow. So when you were out for two weeks, you remember any of it? No. Uh, and the thing is, the paramedics say I coded on them several times. While oh, nice. Getting- Good for you, man. You went all the way down. Yeah. So I went. I went all the way down, and <laughs> then. Uh, well done. I, Most people don't come back from that. Yeah. No. And then I coded again once I got to the hospital, which is why everybody was amazed because they're like coding after a brain injury. Uh, like normally you can't come back. You, know, you normally don't come back. Sure. And I think I came back like five times. Well, so, pretty hardcore, bro. Uh, I don't remember the accident, which I don't have that trauma, you know, to drive again or flashback. And then I don't remember if when, you know, life left me, if I you know saw anything or if there was a flashing of my life or anything. Uh, so that, that part of my memory is, is dark. Yeah, it just got bright and then you woke up, right? And that's, I mean, think about that too. The fact that you don't have to remember that part, you don't have to remember that part. That's a blessing. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's a, that's a freaking blessing. Yeah. Because then you just, just push, yeah, it's just like, hey, man, I went down, I came back up twice. Then you coded, good job. So they shut your battery down and your engine down. Yep. That's a full reboot. Full but, reboot. But I, I, yeah, that's what I say. I'm like, if life had a reset button, I fucking pressed it. Bro, that's, that, that's what that is, man. I, I we know, I know enough. Uh, oh, there's enough of us around now to know that's yeah. what that is. It's better than living in fear. Like, if you did remember any of that, you would have just this innate fear and trauma inside that now you, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. And I was curious about it. I was like, I can't. Oh, I sure, yeah, right. like, let, me, let me drive down this road again. Let's see if anything comes back. But mm-hmm. nothing ever did. And I'm okay with it now. Like, I'm like, you know what? Let's move on. Like, yeah. it's done. So how did you, what was your physical injuries other than, I mean, obviously you've had the brain injuries, were any bones broken or anything? Everything in my face was broken. My right arm uh, got paralyzed because the nerves got ripped out. Uh, or I don't know if they got ripped out or severed. What were you driving? But, uh, what were you riding in? I was driving a brand new Toyota Camry. I think it was a 2017 Toyota Camry. That's what saved your life. Freaking Camrys are stay on the road forever. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I normally you know, don't. Yeah. I, I normally don't acknowledge cars on, on, on the air, but I, I'm just here to tell you that the freaking Camrys—they're a thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel no, that that's thing, right? That was, but no, my uh, femur was protruding on my left leg. I had a torn PCO, and I think I had other torn ligaments in my right leg. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, my right arm was paralyzed, and then everything 
and my face was broken and split in half. Uh, when the paramedics came and tried to extricate, they said that I was spitting everything out, like my teeth and my jaw was like hanging. So, uh, and that's when I went back and thanked them for everything. Like that, I, I asked them what happened, like how did you guys find me? Um, and then they explained everything to me. Oh my God. So you got a compound femur fracture? Yeah. For those of you who don't know that big bone in your leg and your thigh bone, it's called the femur. And when that sucker breaks and comes out, it sounds like a bazooka going off. Oh it is the most, you'll never forget it when you hear it. Hey, and well done, man. I mean, to get your ass whipped so bad when you're spitting teeth and your jaws dragging, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I know what that's like, man. Yeah. And when you come back from something like that, just think if you're down here to take, take that kind of pain. I'm sorry, that's yeah. how it's ingrained in my head. So when I see something like me, whether you know it or not, that's yeah. like a rite yeah. of passage. I mean, it's, it, tr it truly is for us. I'm the opposite. Yeah. It makes me want to vomit just thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I married my opposite, like, by the way. I'm so <laughs> opposite. Like, I have just, like shivers going down my I mean, spine. I need to I patch you up with the Nitro Circus Boys so we yeah. can have a competition who's had their ass with the most, man, because there's a no, bunch of people are like, because my mom's the same way. My mom's right. the same way. Yeah, like, when I tell her, no, no, I'm battle tested now, you know, like. Well, boom, right there. I can do everything. And she's like, oh, no, no. And then when I tell her, oh, you remember like when my femur was back out, like protruding out of my leg, she's like, no, 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 don't tell me. I don't yeah. want to remember. I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. I, yeah, I, I cannot hear the details. I mean, Marcus has been through enough and it all just grosses me out so bad. I'm like, okay, we don't need to talk about it. Oh, yeah, that's what gets so excited when somebody walks in the door, <laughs> I can relate to. I'm like, hey, remember that? How bad that freaking hurts? Uh, what was it? What was it like when you did wake up? I mean, did you at that point, have any idea where you were at or what was going on no um because i woke up at well, i was i was conscious at some point but not that i remember did they put you uh, in a coma i'm sorry did they put you in a coma or did you just go did you go into one i, I want to say it was an induced coma yeah, after check. they stabilized me right, right. Um, but i don't remember i'm not 100 percent sure and then i woke up when i was already at shepherd center uh that i was conscious and i could actually remember and i couldn't move my right arm so one of my friends brought me a white race pour to so see if I can move my left hand. And then I learned how to write with my left hand. And the first thing I wrote was, uh, where am I? How'd I get here? Because I, I didn't know. Yeah. And I didn't recall, I didn't remember anything. Um, and then slowly things started coming back and I started piecing pieces together um, to kind of formulate what was my life now. That's so crazy. How long were you in the hospital? Uh, three months. My gosh. That's almost long enough. Yeah, that's when you're. Like, that's when you start okay. getting tired of being in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about it's like, yeah, it's pretty cool, no, but not, yeah. Mm, and then afterwards, it's it's just kind of like we don't want people don't talk about that, man. And this isn't on the hospitals, but like the, if you go see your buddy or, and you got to stay in the hospital, going getting checked into the hospital is one thing. Going to visit, hang out, and trying to sleep there—that's why the beds are so uncomfortable. They don't want you to have to stay in there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like they even yeah. get tired of us being in there. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. But, I mean, it's nothing yeah. on them. I get it. I I, I truly like, I spent a lot of time in the hospital. I mean, we're we're real yeah. close, me and the hospitals. But I, I uh, there Gosh. are times when I'm laying in there, I'm like, man, I wish I'd donate a lot of money and get these beds comfortable. But then, like, you don't want them comfortable because you don't want my ass staying in there. Oh, yeah, but that, no, that's that's the whole reason why they're like that. Yeah, that's, that's exactly that's the whole reason. They don't. They will never pictures. say that, but that's the reason. Yeah, I saw pictures of like my family and. Literally, they were sprawled out either on the floor or like laying on two beds. Like it was so uncomfortable to even just look at, but they never left. And, uh, you know, for that, I'm here. That's, yeah. what you, that's how you know someone loves you. Yeah. You, that's you the only way your, you can test it is if you your have, ass is parked. If, if you look up and you're in a hospital and you look up, whoever's in there mm -hmm. laying around like that, that's your, that's your partner. That's yeah. true love because that is pure misery. Marcus had a back yeah. surgery when I was like eight months pregnant. It and was awesome. He, um, there was no, they weren't, the room wasn't meant for guests. It didn't have a chair or a bed or anything. And I slept on the floor, big belly pregnant for like oh four God. days. Yeah, they put me in those special guarded yeah. rooms. So I, I, I tried to get out of the bed. Yeah. But I think I remember doing this and I was trying to give her the bed. Uh, yeah, he tried to give me the bed. I'm like, sweet. Stop. I don't remember that, but I'm pretty sure. Um, I did. Right? No, nice. he could, he had a surgery where they went in through his stomach and his back to put a cape. Oh yeah, they the fillet me now. It's all, it's yeah. great. I got you the know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm I'm here with you, man. Yeah. <laughs> and I slept on that floor. Right. That's how I knew she was like ride or die. Hard belly pregnant. 
There's a couple of tests she went through where I was like, Mama, freaking hardcore, man. Yeah. It's ride or die. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. So when you were in the hospital, what kept you going? What made you want to keep fighting? That's a great question. Um, yeah. Was your girlfriend around? You had just visited her. Yeah. So my, my brain injury, it's hard to explain to somebody, you know, what a brain injury is unless they've gone through it. And I know everybody's different, but for me, it, it was like a scratch fist. Like all I remember was I was going down to see my girlfriend and that's all that I was kept replaying. I kept replaying. So for me, like if I loved her before, like that exponentially grew just because my emotions were running rampant and uh, she was the only thing I wanted. And part, partly also because that was the one thing in my life that hadn't changed supposedly, right? Like I, I, I wanted that to stay the same because all I, all I could see was her, right? Like my family was there and so they stayed and I, that stayed the same, but I just couldn't see it because of my brain injury. And uh, all I focused was on her. And that's that's why I kept pushing myself. And I was like, I'm going to make it out for you, for me, for us. And I had already told her that I wanted to get married. And she had always said, I love you. I want to get married, too. So I was like, if we can make it out of this, there's nothing we can't do. You know, there's nothing we can't accomplish together. And so that was my my primary goal. Like I was like, I'm gonna get out of here for us, you know. It, even if my life felt meaningless at the time, you know, like having her there and having something to reach forward to, even if in the end, you know, it was it wasn't really real, you know, it, it kept pushing me. Yeah. And uh, hey, for that, let me tell you something. This whole place was built because of women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we will we'll do anything to get that done. <laughs> Go through any kind of hell to keep. I get yeah. that. That's about. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> that that feeling that comes, I know exactly what this is, and it's an insatiable appetite. Yeah. But your willingness to just do whatever to make it, to keep keep them online, even if they're not around. They got that's exactly. a special whatever that is they throw on us, man. <laughs> yeah, it's it's something special. <laughs> that's a superpower that they don't talk about. So did she stay around? Uh so she stayed around, but it was because she didn't want to go live with her family. And I had told her, hey come over and, and you can live with me, you know, cause I, I knew I needed help, uh, you know, as bad as I didn't want to admit it. Like I knew I needed help. I knew my mom knew my family knew I needed help, but she slowly, she started saying, you know, I stayed with you cause I, I didn't want to live with my family and you're closer to school, you know, cause she was still going to go do her master's or doctor. I took it as a joke, you know, cause I, I thought I, she's got to be joking, but in the end, you know, every joke has a little ounce of truth in it. So Little by little. Life is with, not without its sense of irony. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How did you take that? Horrible. It was like another two trucks to the face. And the thing was that uh, the day she broke it off the day before I had to go see the drunk driver and had to go to his criminal trial. It was mm-hmm. the first time I was going to meet with him, talk with him. I had written to the judge asking him to let me record the interaction because I wanted to do a book. I wanted to eventually also turn into a documentary to help others, you know, navigate through these, their darkest moments. And so I wrote to the judge and I was like, hey, let me go. Let me, can I please report our interaction? Um, but I, because I had, my anger had simmered down slightly, but once she left, I, it was like boiling all over again. And my family was scared. I was going to do something stupid too when I saw him. I bet. Yeah. That's crazy. So All right. How did that go, yeah, go when you went to see him? So I don't know if I told you guys, but uh, I'm from El Salvador. <laughs> I did tell you. <laughs> but uh, this guy, he was also from El Salvador. Oh, and wow. Like, my family, he was from where I was, like, growing up. And Not from the same town? I don't know if it was the same town, but, like, in the same city. Yeah. And, and um we had never really hung out with Salvadorans because, you know, everybody had like a negative connotation, you know, like all gang members or whatever. So my mom always kind of like helped us try to shine a better light on Latinos, especially from El Salvador. And then we tried to avoid all the hurt, the pain back home. And then we come around and it's like full circle. And then this guy, this individual who I had never met before was drunk driving and hits me. So like the first thing I, I said, I said to him was like the last thing I ever wanted to see was somebody from my country behind bars and that's when i broke down like i don't think it would have mattered if he had been american african-american a different culture but it was just like pouring salt on the wound you know like trying to be i was i was always trying to be the opposite of what he had become and just watching him come in 
orange jumpsuit, my height, my build. It was just like a mirror image if I had not chosen the path that my parents had, you know. Oh, uh, me so. oh you ran into yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good way. Uh, uh, okay, I'll give it to you. Yeah, that. All right. That's, that's pretty deep, bro. That's really deep. Yeah. Did the judge let you record that interaction or? He did. He did. And I, I spoke with him and uh, he, my mom brought, was there with me and best believe she wasn't going to let anything slide. She, I went out, broke down and I couldn't continue because I was crying nonstop. She uh, poured out, put, she pulled out some pictures she had brought of me before the accident and she threw it on the, on the table in front of him. And he's, she said, how do you give that back to me? That's my son. And then he started tearing up and spoke, speaking to her in Spanish, which his attorney didn't know any Spanish, but he kind of let us slide. He kind of let us speak, which for that I'm grateful. And he just said, I have two daughters and I would hate them just like you do if something like that happened to them because of me. So uh, I accept whatever responsibility to make you guys at least, you know, find some peace. And I was, that's where we parted. Let's take a second to thank our sponsors over at K12. Our podcast will get you smart, but it's not the only thing that will. Did you know that only 45% of high school students feel that they are prepared for college or careers? Well, today's sponsor, Stride Career Prep, is helping change that. Stride Career Prep lets students take charge of their education and their future by combining real-world skills, training, and traditional academics. Students can actually earn college credit while in high school or get the training needed to land a job right after graduation. I so wish I would have known about this while I was in high school. Stride Career Prep prepares your team for in-demand careers in business, tech, health science, criminal justice, and more, and students can and take courses developed by industry professionals, prepare for certifications, get hands-on experience, network, and most importantly, gain the confidence to succeed. Stride Career Prep is packed by over 20 years of experience in online learning. So if you have a kid at home that's about to graduate high school, or maybe you're a student yourself listening to the podcast, then you should definitely check this out. I wish I would have had known about this sooner for myself, my little brother, my little sister. We all kind of had to wing it and uh, we had to figure out a lot of things the hard way. So having that confidence to be successful, to be able to make that transition from high school into a career, I think that that's just incredible. If you want to check them out, you can head over to k12.com slash podcast. That is k12.com slash podcast. Check them out. Right. Wow. <laughs> oh, you can't hold on to it. Oh my gosh. Well, at least he owned up to it. Yeah. And then his his mom and, and sister came up to me after the trial. And I, I wasn't expecting to find any peace or, you know, any justice, not peace, justice, just because I wanted my life back and nobody could give me that back. Um, so I just kind of wanted to say my part, you know, like this guy I had never met before. I never even spoken to him. And all my life, like all this time, my life had felt like an interrupted conversation. You know, like I, I was making a statement with my life. And then just got cut off abruptly. So going and talking to him and facing that demon helped me kind of put that period at the end. And that's really all I wanted from that. Whatever judgment came down, it wasn't going to give me peace. It wasn't going to give me justice. I just kind of wanted to finish that. And so I grabbed my mom and we walked off the courthouse and I, I wouldn't have wanted to do it with anybody else. You know, that my girlfriend wasn't there. It didn't mean anything at that point. Like I was there with the people who really were there for me through it all. Wow, that's so powerful. So, well, it's crazy too. To, I mean, the, there at times you think, man, that's you got that that hurt on, and then we're here now. And you're like, hey, I was thankful for it. Yeah, so it's like, crazy. How once I got back, then I'd have to because I had I finished that. You know, I finished. What was his like, sentence? Killing. Sorry. What was his sentence? Did he get charged? I, I think he got eight, but he had been serving two by the time the criminal trial came around. So. He was only going to serve six more, I believe, if I'm correct. Um, and for that, I was already mad. Like, I was like, that's not justice for me. Like, I've lost four years of my life. Well, now. So I was like, this guy's only going to serve another four. Like, it, it just didn't. It seemed ironic. Because I was like, I coded. Does that mean he's going to get charged for, uh, you know, vehicle uh, homicide or whatever you call it? Attempted and then, no, because yeah. I came back, right? So um, just, <laughs> if I had stayed down, then yeah. But no. 
Oh my gosh. So they wouldn't deport him for that? I think they that's the plan. I think they are gonna deport him after he uh he serves his sentence. Yeah. I think I think that was the that was the rule. So after all of that, I mean, what kept you moving forward? Because I mean, like you said, losing your girlfriend throughout that period, I mean, that's gotta be kind of like a low blow. You know, I feel like at that point you kind of it would be I don't want to give up. You know, like I think that's like the natural thing. It's just like, well, crap. Like, what am I doing here? Oh, it's kicking the nuts. It's like kicking the nuts, beat, right? Beat to death. So like, like, I gotta <laughs> take that with you. It's yeah, like, God, thanks. Like, what did you do to like push past that piece? Yeah, because I was, I was, I was kind of like, like I said, you know, my my anger against life, against life, like the universe and everything, like it had simmered down. But then now it was like an all-consuming fire again, and uh, it, it was like starting over, you know, and. <laughs> It, it just, it was painful. Um, I thought I had stopped crying, but no, I kept crying after that. And then um, my family never left. And, uh, you know, I, they kind of showed me what true love actually was, you know, and I, I say that my story, I, I thought was going to end with, you know, true love conquers everything, you know, me and my girlfriend stayed together, but the true love I meant was um, my family and me, you know, like uh, the love between a, a father and his son, a mother and his, his, her child and a sister and her brother, you know, like that was the love that got me through it. And so I knew I couldn't break down for them seeing all their sacrifice. So their sacrifice gave my life meaning, even when my life felt meaningless at the time. And so I was like, I got to continue. You know, I came this far and I, I before the accident, I had gotten to where I was, you know, not with anybody's help, but just through my work, through my parents' belief in me. And so I was like, none of that has changed. You know, the person I was before is still inside me. So I know I can still get to where I was. And I've always been one of those determined people that won't stop until he gets it done. And that kind of kept me pushing forward. And once I saw I could run, I was like, no, we're going to do more. We're going to go sprint. We're going to keep uh, pushing ourselves. And that at the end of the day, that's what got me back to where I am. So, so awesome. uh, let me ask, that drive you had in the beginning when, when, when you were a kid pushed you mm -hmm. in the direction. And, now, and compared to the one you have now, what, explain those two. What's the difference? It's it's more intense. It's a different I, kind of fuel, right? It, it or a, a, a different kind of flame. Kind of it's like blue, right? It would, it burns. Yeah. And I, I I used to say this every now and again, man. I it switched me from running on a red flame to a blue one. Oh my god, that's like the best the best analogy. You know what I'm saying? Is I can't yeah. shut it down. It's always there, and man. As soon as it gets turned on, it's freaking hot. Yeah. Now it's 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 like. It's more. It's more intense. Yeah, way it's, more intense. It's, it's, it's like it's different. Like or it was. It was. It was running hot. You know, like just like you said. But now it's like with a, di a different fire. You know, yeah. like there's nothing I know that's going to keep me down. There's always. There's always something I'm chasing. You know. So do you have? Have you gotten gone through different therapies for your traumatic brain injury? Yeah. Um. So I went. I've had every kind of therapy uh, you can imagine, but. After a while, I stopped going to therapy. Uh, I mean, they cleared me to stop going to therapy. And then it was just my brain, hemor the, the blood that it was hemorrhaging, it just had to be absorbed by my body. And that's when the, once it was done, that's when my brain injury had healed. And I, I, I wasn't getting headaches or migraines every time. So thankfully that, that ended around 2020, mid 2020, I want to say. Hey, you came online just in the craziness, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good for you. You're an overachiever. Just when the world came in early. Yeah, you got here early. Congratulations. Yeah. All right. So I, I mean, that, that is the whole time you're sitting, you got you have traumatic brain injury. I mean, I'm looking for it. <laughs> I mean, you did well. Yeah, you look. Really and that, good. that drive it, it, that that it capacitates that whole feeling, man. It's just oh, it's that determination you got, man. It's pays off you can see it thank you so when did you um decide to write the book the book um i, I gotta give credit to mama perez <laughs> Perez, Perez. Perez, Perez. <laughs> yes. it's a real She's thing the, man they don't like it, it when you don't say idea. it right it was her idea um <laughs> and for her it was she never thought it was like you know like i was gonna publish it um well she never doubted that i would but she that wasn't her intention at first right she just told me to start writing everything down. And just when she saw how angry I was, how frustrated, depressed I was, um, you know, just with life, God, everything. I just, I, she told me to sit down and write it, you know, just write down all my feelings, all my emotions. She thought that eventually I could turn it into a book, but for her, it was more like it was going to serve as a catharsis, I guess, for my broken soul. 
and just kind of help put the pieces together. That worked. And it worked. It, it does, worked. right? Yeah. That's yeah. same thing happened to me. Really? He <laughs> same thing. Down. I, I, I write every day. All right, I, you know that. You know what? That's probably an exaggeration. I probably write every other day. Sometimes every day, I'll, I'll journal, <laughs> write something down for sure. And and I, you always, you've heard this over time. I, I heard when I was a kid, I was like, hey man, you, if you keep that stuff in there, it'll stay in there. If you yeah. write it down, or if you speak it out and openly talk about it, it'll it comes out. Yeah. And you instantly feel better. Mm. You can you can capture that weight and keep it in there. Yeah, if it's still rotating in your brain. Yeah, if it's, yeah you need that. That's what that means. Yeah, you have to let you it gotta go. let it out. <laughs> yeah, that was something I, I didn't I didn't I didn't do before, right? And, and nobody I, knows I that. No one tells yeah, you to do and that. It, and I had heard it, but I hadn't tried it, you know. And because before my accident, like I, I didn't need it. Like all my emotions were kept in check. That's right. Like, I would work out. I would go write some music. I, there was there was no time where I was like feeling any emotion, you know, like that I couldn't control. But now after this, I couldn't go work out. I, I was basically motionless. I couldn't sing. My mouth was wired shut. You know, like I couldn't do anything. So it was like the only thing I can do is kind of help put everything on paper and not even on paper because I had to type it with my left hand. But it was just putting it down, putting all those thoughts, all those feelings down. And then after my girlfriend left, I was like, no, I got I got to write this. out. I got to get this out of my chest, off my chest. Um, and speaking with my mom helped, but also putting it down on words and on paper, like it just, it just helped me heal, you know? Mm -hmm. awesome. I, so a lot of my therapy when I got back is I would rewatch the movies that I grew up on. It kind of got me the way into where I was, I was supposed to be. And if I yeah. got hurt when I would get injured, I'd go back in there and rewatch them. It's almost <laughs> as if, and this is one of the best parts about having the actors and the stars around yeah. and the people in, on the in-between because they'll, they'll write out what they see in us and they'll write those stories out. And if you can watch yourself or watch somebody doing that, it yeah. alleviates a lot of stress. For whatever reason, when we can watch our counterpart going through something, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. I can do that. Or, or, oh, it looked like that, or this, that, and the other. Maybe it, there's a, it's, like I said, it's kind of lethargic, and, but it's also therapeutic. It's, it, yeah. it's an in-between. Yeah. But eventually it clears everything out. So you mentioned you were mad at God during this whole process. Did you ever get over that? I did. I did. But it, it was a long time. It was a long journey because I guess the whole time, the question, you know, and I'm sure everybody's ha asked this, you know, when something bad happens. But for me, it was just like, why? Why me? You know, like why? I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't even having fun. You know, I was driving. I was just driving. And like, why me was the thing that was constantly on my mind and not just mine, you know, my mom's, my dad's, my family's. Uh, so I, I knew I wasn't the only one having a struggle with my faith at that time. Uh, my mom was going through something probably even worse just because everything she believed in, you know, had been basically broken just because all she ever asked for was for God to take care of her family, you know, and her children. She lived and died for her children. Um, and so she she didn't know why the same reason, you know, like a why me. And so. Little by little, um, I started seeing that I wasn't alone, you know, on this on this ride, on this journey. Um, yeah, what happened to me was unfair, you know, but I survived. And I, I figured as long as there's some breath left in me, you know, you, I still have the possibility to live a beautiful life. And despite all the trauma and scars, and that's what I told the drunk driver when I saw him, you know, I was like, it's with the decisions you make that matter. And so take responsibility for what you want. I mean, for what you did. And so I'm, I was going to take responsibility of where I was and where I wanted to be and get myself there again. So you, you, did you get the answer? Why me? I you did. want me to tell you? I, I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Are you ready? Yeah. Because you're the one that was supposed to take it. You're the only <laughs> one down there that could have done that yeah. and come out with the fortitude to, to turn it back around for something good. Yeah. Why not you? You were the one that was designed for it. Yeah. Well, and that, that's how that works, man. It's like I. I was like, I wasn't doing nothing wrong. Yeah, because you're a great guy. You're the, you're the symbol and the light for that, that environment. There has to be something for someone to look, for people in that environment to look to. Who yeah. more than someone who's articulate and can, can take the pain? And I get that drunk driver. like, man, who's the one that had to carve you up? Hey, I, I still think about the ones that had to carve me up. Yeah. And I, I look at it, man, I can look at it in bad ways. They beat me down. Or I can look at it like they cut me up into this. Exactly. They cut yeah, off the excess and they, this now. is what came out of there. Well, and how I look at it is like God was showing you, you had this intense, what you thought, this intense idea of what you thought love was. Mm -hmm. And coming out on the other side, you realized what you 
thought love was with your girlfriend was absolutely not love. Mm -hmm. The love was really always there with your family. And that's God's love. They showed you God's love. She wasn't showing you God's love. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's where I'm, where I'm at right now. You know, like I realized that I was the only one that would, well, I, I don't want to like toot my own horn, right? But I'm saying like I was made made to, you know, take this and oh, we'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you that, that, that's why that's why I show up. Yeah. <laughs> if you hadn't yeah. figured that out yet, all right, that's what I'm for. Yeah, yeah. I have recognized yeah. it when someone's had their ass whipped for God and yeah. country, man. Whether <laughs> whether you signed up to be in the arena or not, just being in here on yeah. earth signed you up for that. And we never know what it's gonna play out, how it's gonna play out, what which one we're gonna do, what role you're gonna pick. Well, we always yeah. have or get free picked choice. For. We have free choice. God gives us free choice. And so we can choose to sit and waller in anger and right. confusion and fear and all of that. Or we can choose to believe that he gave, He has a purpose for us, even though we don't know what it is at that moment. Right. But we can use our situation to help people that might be going through something similar. And that's what you're doing with this book is you're wanting other people that have been in bad circumstances to see you can conquer this and you can fight to live and who cares if you lose a girlfriend who cares if you know things might be a little different or whatever but you still come out stronger on the other side yeah and like for me like the whole the whole aspect of uh, me being the one to take this, like a, a couple of people that were driving behind me got in touch with my sisters in the hospital and they were like, we were riding with uh, children in the back who I don't think would have made it if we had gotten hit. Well, there and you so go. Afterwards, I didn't even know that. After, you, after, definitely you definitely know, looking for your answer. This, after they told me this, I was like, no, I, I, the way it sucks that I took the hit, you know, in the, if in the end I, I helped save a life, I helped save somebody, then, you know, yeah, it's worth it. It was worth it, you know, and I, Thankfully, I came out at the end, you know, and now, now I'm unbreakable. That's you know, it's kind of a straight gate to heaven. <laughs> Save some kids. <laughs> yeah. Right. Dang it. I feel pretty reassuring walking around down here now, knowing you got that merit badge. That's free pass. Yeah. What yeah. am I talking about? Yeah, right. You know, yeah. oh, well, who is this guy? What are you even talking about? And you got a blessing along with it. Yeah. That's yeah. oh, awesome, man. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Thank you. Well, Thank you're you. welcome. All right. <laughs> yeah. No. How? How? All right. Tell us where people can find you and how they can follow you. Yeah, I, so you've I'm got still putting book. your story together in my head, man. Yeah. Well, you know, well done. But way you've that got this like. book now, and mm-hmm. you're are you where can people buy that? They can buy it online on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, um, uh, Books a Million, anywhere online. Uh, Amazon would probably be the easiest, just because <laughs> they're so quick. Um, and then they can find me on Instagram, Twitter at Caesar Perez Fit. Um, I. I was a fitness fanatic. I still am. So that's why I had the username. Yeah. And uh, I will be putting out some music alongside of it because um, and during the book, you know, writing music was my was my therapy, you know, and even though I couldn't play at the time, uh, all the lyrics and all the emotions I was feeling I knew was once in a lifetime kind of thing. And like I said, I've always liked getting a message across and I do it through music, uh, you know, through graphics, video, all of it. So that's it's awesome. coming out. Love that. Bless you, brother, man. Thanks yeah. for coming on here and being a part of that. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for taking it and turning no, it around you. in a good way. I mean, it's always a it's something to see y'all. Are yeah, you gonna... I'm excited. This this book is just a uh, stepping stone for a lot of bigger projects, uh, and hopefully, I uh, I can share them with you guys in a little bit. Are you uh, gonna we'll do back. a documentary? That's that's exactly what's on the on yeah. the books on the projects, and I, I I just have everything, you know, like my family and everybody like doc- documented everything which i didn't know about but now i'm grateful for it because now i can like put my journey together like well, this sure. is a movie script in itself you know well you got the background for it yeah that's that's, that's, a, that's a great path i mean it was already yeah. set up for you and then you had to go through the transition now you come back around you already got the skill set yeah well so give your I'm mom excited. and your sisters <laughs> a hug from me yeah keep us posted to it we'll, <laughs> those we'll, uh, are my kind of people <laughs> we'll let everybody know <laughs> yeah no thank you guys for having me truly it was a blessing and they yeah. share, they were share the same last name you don't think that they're related well i'm sure <laughs> dna wise they way say it the same back. way somewhere i don't care how far back you go i'm just telling you that's I'm pretty that's sure the thing there's that's like <laughs> three million 
Pettis. They're all related. Texas, That's right. They're all related. <laughs> They're all related. That's why we got last names. I can't, I can't stress I that enough. I think we were, our last name was so cool and so unique until we, you know, I realized, no, there's like so many millions. <laughs> Y'all are part of that big family. That name's even in the Bible. I mean, in, te- <laughs> in Texas alone, like, it's a very common. Yeah. They're everywhere. I love when I run into them because I'll yell at them now. I'm like, you're my family. You better get your ass out of there. They're probably cousins. We're probably cousins. That's right. I said, we're cousins. You're my cousin. You better get your ass. That's crazy. Oh, and, man. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing yeah, your story. We appreciate it. God bless you, man. Hug your family. They're awesome. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. thank you. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.